in the Torello district. Um, Mr. President, distinguished uh, colleagues, this is a motion on the alarming uh, report on poor quality of services in Nigeria teaching hospitals. The Senate notes with concern recent reports of poor quality and high cost of services in Nigerian teaching hospitals as reported in the Daily Trust newspaper of Monday, May 6, 2019. Observes that the said report detailed widespread cases of poor electricity supply, obsolete medical equipment, and decayed infrastructure, and other factors which have made it extremely difficult for Nigerian teaching hospitals to provide tertiary health care to patients with complex ailments such as cancer, kidney, kidney failure, etc. The Senate further observes that teaching hospitals by their mandate are expected to train current and future medical personnel for the country, apart from offering tertiary health care services to patients with complex ailments. Notes that the said report, as published by the Daily Trust newspaper on Monday 6 May 2019, is said to be the outcome of an investigation on the quality of services in our teaching hospitals, including the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Usman Danfordio University Teaching Hospital, University of Maiduguri Teaching Hospital, Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital, Kano, University of Uyo Teaching Hospital, and so on. The Senate is aware that several stakeholders in the health sector have recently raised alarm on the declining quality of services in Nigerian teaching hospitals and missed cases of overcrowding and lack of adequate funding and personnel necessary for optimal performance. The Senate is concerned that most teaching hospitals in Nigeria have been overstretched, forcing patients to sleep on bare floors plastic mats, and other unhygienic conditions that put them at the risk of contracting other ailments. Senate is worried that patients with terminal illnesses, such as cancer and kidney failure, are now compelled to travel long distances to access chemotherapy and dialysis at very high cost due to the absence of requisite medical equipment for such services within, the, within their vicinity. The Senate accordingly resolves to, one, mandate the Senate Committee on Health to conduct an emergency investigation hearing, investigative hearing on the state of health care services in our teaching hospitals and report back to the Senate within one week. Two, summon the Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, to brief the Senate on the current state of facilities and health care services in the Nigerian teaching hospitals. Three, urge the federal government to adopt a policy on subsidizing the medical expenses of patients with terminal ailments such as cancer and kidney failure. And four, urge the federal government to immediately adopt short and long-term measures that will holistically address the challenges confronting our teaching hospitals and retool them for excellent tertiary healthcare services in the country. I so move. I mean, Mr. President. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I'm Senator Matthew Urogide. I represent the good people of Edo South Central District in Edo State. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second this motion ably moved by Senator David Umaru. With respect to the state of deterioration in our university teaching hospitals across the country, and of course, the very poor services that these institutions offer in, in our country today. Mr. President, I have not just reason to, to support this motion. I equally want to commend Senator David Umaru for coming up with this motion. It is important that we actually get to you know, refresh ourselves with the mandate for the establishment of these institutions in our land. The tertiary health institutions that we have include all the university teaching hospitals in Nigeria. And these university teaching hospitals as established by the federal government virtually exist. They are all attached to all the universities that offer medical, you know, course. When I say medical course, medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, laboratory science, and all other medical courses. 
And the mandate for establishing these institutions, Mr. President, is number one, to offer primary health care services, secondary and tertiary health care services. Of course, for teaching and for research. These objectives, you know, they are very high objectives. When you say teaching, the teaching hospital provide centers, you know, for teaching, for training, or factories for, you know, for making of medical doctors. Mr. President, some of us have been privileged to, you know, uh, by way of our training, you know, to work in university teaching hospitals. We know what the services were like in those days, in the 70s and the early 80s. And of course, we know what the services are like now. You know, in the the years, you know, uh, succeeding the millennium. Mr. President, I want to say I agree in very strong terms that even the facts that are stated here are even understated. University hospitals have not rendered the services they are supposed to render because of neglect. And of course, the funds that we need to run university hospitals to meet with the set objectives are not given to them. And I have found out that there seems to be an irony that has existed in the formation of the mandate that is given to Third Fund. Third Fund has been able to provide alternative source of funding universities in this country and other tertiary institutions that are owned by federal government and even the ones that are owned by the state government. But the funding that is given by Third Fund does not extend to university teaching hospitals. So that makes it now that the university teaching hospitals are only exposed to the, the, the budgets that are provided for them through the Federal Ministry of Health. And the complexity in these places, Mr. President, let me say, for the benefit of everybody, the university hospitals, apart from that they are centers for teaching, they are, equal, they are equally centers where the teachers or the employees that are in the university teaching, I mean the university, in the universities, under Federal Ministry of Education, they come to offer clinical services in the teaching hospitals where in one breath they are exposed to good breath, good life, they come to the teaching hospitals, they are limited. And that is why you are seeing the inter, you know, the rivalry that you are seeing among the professionals in the teaching hospital setting. And I believe it is because of lack of funding. So I want to lend my voice that the teaching hospitals certainly need extra funding to be able to meet with their challenges. The other day, well, you know, if we recall, Mr. President, we had to even give additional funding in this uh, 2018 budget to meet up with universal health coverage. And when we are saying that, we are talking of services that are rendered, health services are rendered to our people. But the teaching hospitals were not beneficiaries of anything coming from that allocation. So I believe if you go to the center that we have been established for different things, for instance, if it was established, to meet up with, you know, care for the kidney. Other teaching hospitals too were established to meet up with orthopedic, you know, uh, services. Others too were made for open heart surgery and such things. But because these hospitals do not, they lack the funds to meet up with the maintenance of, of their equipment and to render these, you know, high level services, we find out that they are not doing, you know, what they are set to do. So I think it is high time of course, we as parliament must come to two terms because a healthy nation where the people are healthy is a wealthy nation. But if we cannot fund health care in our country, particularly for institutions that render services at the highest level, then in which case it means that we are not serious. And then development, of course, will continue to elude us. Senator Boroughface. This is Robert Boroughface, representing on Donald's editorial district. I rise to support the motion raised by my dear friend, here, Senator Maru. I believe that we are not getting what we should be getting from our teaching hospitals. Today, many Nigerians go out of this country to receive medical treatment either in South Africa or in India. And our teaching hospitals are supposed to be the apex of medical service in this country. Mr. President, I happen to do my PhD in a teaching hospital. 
1971. And the quality of services that we have there then cannot be compared to what we have today. And I see a missing link, Mr. President, in the administration of teaching hospitals. The, I think there are about 36 or more teaching hospitals in the country. They all report to a director in the Ministry of Health. And I can't see how a director in the Ministry of Health can adequately look into the problems of the teaching hospitals. For the universities, we have national university commission that looks at the teaching hospitals. And I think we need to have a teaching a hospital commission, you know, under the Ministry of Health, to look after the teaching hospital, not just one director in the ministry. And I think we have a teaching hospital commission to look at the, to coordinate the teaching hospitals as in the services will improve. Because they'll be able to look into details, the issue of funding, the issue of quality of services rendered by the teaching hospital, and so on and so forth. So I hopefully I you know fully support this motion. Initiated in the body of the motion, Mr. President is not gain saying the fact that poor equipment, absolute equipment, electricity supply as narrated by the move of the motion is seen all over our tertiary health institutions, that is, the teaching hospital. Mr. President, since the motion restricts us to debate, to talk about the tertiary health care or the teaching hospital, I'll restrict myself to that. But I will not lose sight of the fact that what is envisaged in this motion is almost a replica of what is happening in the secondary uh, health institutions. But one is worried that is this teaching hospital that are vested with the problem of training our medical personnel that is what we expect as consultants to come out to render services to our health sector, undergo training in this institution. And if this institution are decaying at this rate, what wonders, I mean one wonders, the type of products that will come up, come out from this institution. And then if the products are not well educated in their different fields, then you don't expect the best of services to be rendered by these medical personnel as they eventually leave the teaching hospital. Mr. President, the time is now for us as a government to pay particular attention to our health sector because health is worth. And without health, no one can do anything. So my suggestion is that, in terms of budgetary provision, National Assembly of Pride is on bid. In providing, but I'm taking aback once more, that the person that has this institution is a professor of health, and I think he should know better than some of us, that there is need for us to put our teaching hospitals in good perspective. Comprehensive report on the state of teaching hospitals and federal medical centers in Nigeria. And one interesting part of that report was the detail in which they have gone through all the teaching hospitals, itemizing the problems, the challenges, and the tragedy that has become of our teaching hospitals over the years. For example, the ABU Teaching Hospital, which was a hospital which I was born, they have an overhead cost of five to six million naira every month and have to pay the electricity bill of over 12 million. 
and also have to buy diesel. So most times, the patients are being forced to go out and even buy syringes for themselves. Most of the structures in teaching hospitals and federal medical centers have been built for over two to three decades ago. One unfortunate thing we have seen is the security personnel within the teaching hospitals were privately contracted and they have never been paid for up to three to four months. And another unfortunate thing is some Part of last year, there was a strike by the Joint Health uh, Workers Services Union, Johesu, where they highlighted the state of our teaching hospitals. What do we do about them? People are dying. Many of us don't patronize such hospitals today. They have been grossly underfunded. I think if there is any justice we can do for a Senate like this, headed by a medical doctor, to do all you can within the very few lifespan of this Eighth Senate to give recommendations that will be of value and that will add value to save our teaching hospitals and save the lives of millions of our people patronizing them. Thank you very much. Senator Abe, and then Senator Lidani. That, um, this motion definitely deserves our support. Let me just say, sir, that mine will just be a few comments. First is that since there's a prayer here that we invite the Honorable Minister of Health. The day he comes, let us actually make out time to discuss the real challenges that is facing the healthcare industry in this country. The second thing I would like to say, sir, is that we need to look at the structure of these hospitals. Because there is no point we continue to pretend in this country that something can work when we have designed the thing not to work. My brother, Professor Boroughface, was talking about one director, all the CMDs reporting to one director. Why does a CMD need to report to anybody for that matter? With all due respect, sir, this country, anybody who is appointed chief medical director of a hospital can as well be minister of health. The person can even be president of Nigeria. So what is the point we appoint people to offices and then we don't even give them opportunity to even do the job that we have asked them to do? It's all about corruption. It's all about control. People, the president is to appoint the CMD. Why does the president need to know who is chief medical director of University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital? What's his, what's his business? What's the necessity of it? The reason that provision is put there is that so, so somebody can bring somebody who is his boy to be chief medical director and then they begin to award contracts. Let us move towards autonomy, through autonomy for these institutions. Let us recognize the ones that can work and work well. And the ones that are not working, let us know that if it is Professor, uh, I wanted to say Bukola, but it may be misinterpreted. <laughs> if it is Professor David Umoru, that is CMD of uh, the University Teaching Hospital in Mina, let us see that he's the one who cannot do the job. If it is Professor Abe, that is the CMD of the one in Enugu, let him do the job and let us see. Let us stop all this unnecessary bureaucracy and corruption that is destroying all our institutions. I think, sir, that the day the minister will come here, let us create time and actually discuss this problem honestly and sincerely. Nigerians are already voting with their feet, climbing into planes every day to go to India, where they are dying in their numbers. We can create quality health care for Nigerians in this country. We just need to do the right thing. Thank you, sir. President, mandate the Senate Committee on Health to conduct an emergency investigative hearing on the state of healthcare services in our teaching hospitals and report back to the Senate within one week. Those in favor of prayer one say aye. Those against say nay. That is a prayer two. Summon the Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Adewale, to visit the Senate on the current state of facilities and healthcare services in Nigerian teaching hospitals. Those in favor of prayer two say aye. Those against say nay. I say it. Prayer three, urge the federal government to adopt a policy on subsidizing the medical expenses of patients with terminal ailments such as cancer and kidney failure. Those in favor of prayer three say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. And finally, prayer four, urge the federal government to immediately adopt short and long term measures that will holistically address the challenges confronting our teaching hospital and retweet them for excellent tertiary healthcare services in the country. Those in favor of prayer four say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Additional prayer center, please. 
opportunity and then we can conclude if that's need be. The same for let me join others in thanking Senator David Dumuru for that uh, very useful motion. I think it will make it's a very important, urgent intervention that's required from us. And so we need to get the minister here as quick as possible. But it gives, as you all say, it gives one great concern. When you consider every year a budgetary allocation is made, no matter how inadequate it is, surely it should be adequate enough to be able to have a facility that patients can be taken care of. Where our patients are lying on the floor, surely it's a big shame the institution. And it all comes down, as you rightly say, is corruption. That comes down to it. It means that majority of this budget allocation are not used for what they've been allocated for. They must be used for something else. And that's why I'm happy that the next item we have is this. We need to strengthen the Auditor General's office, honestly, until we begin to clearly oversee monies being sent to MDAs. We'll continue to have this kind of problem. How, how, how inadequate can funding be that there's no light, patients are lying on the floor, and meanwhile, they are getting monthly, they're getting allocation every time. I think there is... They, and they're getting, also they're getting revenue. They, they, there, is, there is a serious uh, problem. I hope that uh, we'll be able to see what steps we can take urgently. Leader of the Senate.